Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of My Unfair Advantage. We're going to be talking about proper networking, the right way to forge quality relationships. Omar Martin here with Melinda Martin, as usual. Hello, everybody. And we've got a really cool guest for this video. His name is Mr. Lonnie Robinson. Hello, so, everybody. What's going on, Omar? Uh, well, I, I'm really glad to have you on this one, Lonnie, because you and I met on Facebook. Right. And talking about digital networking and the digital divide, which is something I'm going to talk about a little bit in a second here. I want to talk about the right way to forge quality relationships. Uh, we're actually, uh, right now, during the broadcast of this, we're uh, at an event. We are in uh, Washington, and we are attending Yannick Silver's underground event, where we're broadcasting our weekly MUA webinar. Now, you're probably watching this right now on a replay in the archives. However, we're live right now, and the purpose of coming to this event really is to network, is to meet other people with like-minded uh, ideals and goals, and to forge relationships that can be mutually beneficial in business. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about do's and don'ts. There's, there's a right way and the right, wrong way to do that. And we've all gotten annoyed at one point or another by somebody on Facebook that tried to do this the wrong way. Uh, we've all been approached at one point or another in our lives, when whatever business we're from, in person by someone that was trying to be, uh, you know, just so over, you know, they were trying to do the right thing for their business, but they were being overbearing, doing it the wrong way. So hopefully this will guide you. Now, uh, with proper networking, I think it's important that you're mindful of what we call the digital divide, uh, especially online. You know, there's no replacement for good old fashioned smile and a handshake. And that's why I encourage everyone that's within the sound of my voice to go in person to live events. Uh, you know, there's there's live events in your industry. Uh, in, in, in your area where you live, you know, and it's just a question of finding them and attending them. There's no replacement for walking up to someone, shaking their hand and saying, hi, my name is Omar and I'm an internet marketer. What do you do? And the cool thing about doing that way and doing it like that and, uh, you know, building a relationship like that is that you're breaking the digital divide. When somebody can see you, when somebody can interact with you, they can see your facial, there's a lot lost in text when you're just typing through a chat box. People can't see your facial expression. People can't see the hear the sincerity in your voice. Uh, this is what we call the digital divide. Another thing is people tend to do and say, and, and uh, they, they just tend to be a lot different when they're communicating digitally than they when they are in person, right? Even when we type an email, we're more careful about the grammar. We're, we're not ourselves. We don't talk like ourselves. When we're reading a letter, when, and we come across the word A, we tend to say, I just bought a car. Instead of saying, hey, I just bought a car, dude. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We read differently than we talk. We talk differently online and we chat differently than we would in person. And that's what we call the digital divide. We, we, uh, we, we really, really can improve our uh, relationship building and our networking when we go to live events. And sometimes people are kind of afraid of doing that. Well, you know what? Like with anything else, you're not going to overcome that fear unless you get out to a live event. You know, I've been to a lot of live events. There are expensive ones. There are affordable ones. And you can very easily book yourself a room in the hotel or the conference center where that event is taking place and just network in the lobby for a day or two. You know what I mean? No one says that you need to uh, be all gung-ho and sit in the event. As a matter of fact, let me tell you something. While you're sitting down in the event, you may be learning a bunch of stuff uh, from the presenters on the stage. However, if you're at an event where it's just a pitch fest and things are just being sold from the stage, you're not really making quality relationships with people. Those relationships are made in the elevator, at the bar, in the lobby, uh, at, at, at the booths. Lonnie, how many how many events have you been to that uh, that you can remember? Wow, probably like 15. 15 events. And would yeah. you say that you've made some good relationships online and events? Oh, yeah. The can you think of one person that you've met at an event that you're friends with today that you've done business with? Mike Filsane. Mike Filsane. Holy cow, well, that's a pretty good contact. Yeah, event. just talk with him today. Actually. That's awesome. That is awesome. So. Uh, I, I know that, that, let me ask you, Melinda, who have you met at an event that you've become very good friends with and that you've, uh, that we've done business with? Um, Josh Bartlett. Josh mm. Bartlett. Melinda met Josh Bartlett at an event. How about that? Now that's somebody that we have a very, in fact, we're doing an event with Josh, Josh Bartlett really soon. Mm -hmm. And we just made a hundred thousand dollars in sales promoting a Josh <laughs> Bartlett product. So I would have, I would have to say that that's probably was a good person to meet at an event, right? So, uh, again, this is the kind of thing that I'm not saying you're not going to have a successful business if you don't attend live events. I'm saying that a live event and a good old fashioned handshake and a smile uh, can truly, truly improve your business and add something to your business that you otherwise might not have. Make it a friendship. That's another thing that's important. Make it a friendship. Take baby steps. Provide unconditional, irrevocable value first. 
I'm going to say that again, provide unconditional, irrevocable value first. A lot of people don't understand the true definition of the word unconditional. And that simply means that I am providing something for you without any conditions. You don't have to do anything for me in return. You don't have to do this, that, or the other thing in order to get this from me. I want to know how I can provide value for you, but I want you to be genuine when you make that offer. I need you to be sincere when you make that offer. When you walk up to somebody, like if I would just go up, hi, Lonnie Robinson, I've met you online. My name is Omar Martin. And I would like to know what I can do in your business just to help you, just to provide value for you. What can I do? When somebody comes up to me and kind of has that approach, I'm thinking, oh, shit, here, yeah, we, go. here we go. This guy, this guy, <laughs> want, where are we, what are we leading up to? Where are we going with this whole thing? This is, uh, I don't think this is this is sincere. I don't think that this is genuine. And I think that uh, sometimes we become a little bit overbearing. Uh, you wouldn't do that in a relationship. You wouldn't do that with somebody that you meet. And you should approach these relationships just as you would any other relationship. You got to make it a friendship first, right? Uh, I'll tell you what. You know, there's a courting period in every single relationship, uh, and it's important that you go through that courting period. You meet somebody, hey, how you doing, man? Hey, cool, Lonnie, nice to meet you. My name is so-and-so. Uh, awesome, man. Where can I learn more about you? Cool deal. Hey, man, I'm going to be over here later if you want to talk a little bit more about what you do. would love to get to know you better, and, and that's it. And, and you know, you got we're going to talk a little bit more about pulling the string instead of pushing this, the string. But if you're wondering, well, what do I say? How do I talk to people? Well, I, I want to I point out a few things. Everyone loves to talk about something. You just got to find that something. I learned this going door to door. I know Melinda used to be really, really good at striking up conversation and very, very quickly doing what we call breaking the ice. Melinda was like awesome with icebreakers. And she used to get people, I used to watch it happen like right in front of my eyes. And I used to wonder how the hell did she just do that? Like she would knock on a door and before you know it, the person's giving them a tour of the house. The person's like <laughs> inviting them to eat. You know, and I'd be like, oh my God, like how'd you do that? And she would get people talking about their garden and she would, she would like compliment people. Like what, what are the kind of things that you would say to people? Like when, when a woman answered the door, just to icebreaker, break into a conversation and get them to like it. Well, it really depends. You know, um, sometimes, especially if there's a, a woman in the house, they have like um, decorations for their yard and stuff like that. So if I saw a, cute um light with a butterfly on it i I'd, I'd, I'd bring it up and be like oh that's really cool I, I really like it um also if they have children um we i i naturally i i love kids so i would definitely i would start talking to the kids i'd kind of get them involved i'll ask them if they like pizza you know right, right, right. and i and and i just build that relationship if you women love when you talk about their children their mm. children in their house, you know, mm. you, they love those things. If they don't have children, it's their house, you know, and yeah. or their pet, their their dog. Oh, their talk cat. to me about a dog. You want to come talk to me? Talk to me right. about your dog. Last man. night at the bar, I was talking at least thirty minutes about Romeo, Juliet, and Roxy. Yeah. You know, right. so right. It, it's definitely those are just the key things to to hit on. Everybody likes to talk about Themselves. something, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody likes to talk about. It. So, what's what's the kind of thing that you've uh, either experienced in your business or that you've actually done to kind of break into a conversation with somebody that you've just met on? Well, let me tell you something that happened to me recently. I was talking to a top marketer. He's a trainer of other marketers, so to speak. And I sent him a message and I said, hey, I just wanted to introduce myself. You know, Omar, you and I have talked about having your internet marketing resume. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to do a talk on that. Um, having your internet marketing resume, positioning yourself. People always come up to you and say, hey, can I help you? How can I help you? You know, let me know if I can help you. But what can you do for someone right so you gotta you gotta position yourself to you know be there to to have something to do for them right you know people just say that because it sounds good and they think that's an end for them so basically what i did recently is i, I sent a message to this guy and i said hey um and, and people were telling me well he's not really approachable he doesn't really respond and who's on facebook and i saw him on facebook i was on facebook and i said hey um I've been following you for a while now in a non-stalking kind of way. <laughs> and uh, I was watching your YouTube the other day and it really inspired me. And this is some of my takeaways from it. By the way, my name is Lonnie. Uh, we don't really know each other. I know you really well because I follow you. Uh, here's my About Me page. Go check it out. And it tells you, it gives you a list of things that I can do and let me know if I can help you. Huh. And it struck up a good conversation. First of all, he thought the non-stalking kind of way comment was really funny. Right, humor, you know, humor breaks barriers, it, man. Absolutely, and then the fact that I knew some things about him. Right. You know, I, I named the particular video that I saw, right. named the bullet points, right. the main takeaways I got from that. Right. 
and it just really opened up a conversation. So right. now he's hitting me up. Right. And, uh, you know, we're building that relationship. You know what someone did once? They said, hey, Omar, I purchased a, uh, a product from you in the past called High Performance Sales Secrets. And I'll never forget what you said on page 13. It was, and then they quoted yeah. something that I said. And I was like, holy shit, really? Did I say that? I was right. like, cool. You know, like all of a sudden <laughs> this guy's got my attention. Like yeah. I'm talking to you. I'm listening to you mm -hmm. because you took the time to look at something about me. That guy 15 minutes ago might have just Googled something <laughs> yeah, about yeah, right. me. But you know what? He took those 15 minutes mm -hmm. uh, to find out about me. Uh, and he struck up uh, a conversation. And I'm going to you know, recommend to you that you make it a friendship first uh, and find yeah. something that they like to talk about. Everybody likes that something. Melinda talked about uh, a minute ago. Kids, you know, people love talking about their kids. And why not? You know, again, we, we miss this. We lose this in the digital divide, right? Because mm -hmm. we're sitting at our computer working in, in our work environment when we're trying to build relationships, which is completely different than when we're walking in the lobby and we run into somebody that we think we'd like to meet that's wearing a name tag. And we say, hey, how you doing? Uh, my name is Omar. I see your name is Tim. Hi, Tim. You know, uh, what part of the country are you from? What do you do? You know, totally different environment and mindset. When you're sitting down, if you're sitting down with the purpose of making business contact, uh, contacts, you're working. You know, and that's the worst. You, that's the worst mentality right. to make friends. You know, when mm -hmm. you know, and and it's it's a forced friendship at that point, and this doesn't lead some. You know, any any kind of forced attraction is going to take a lot of work mm -hmm. to maintain that connection, and that is something that you should steer away from. Um, yeah. the, here's another thing, and Lonnie just just touched on this uh, elevator pitch, right? What's your elevator pitch? Uh, you know, Lonnie mentioned sending somebody to there about me. Hey, this is what I do. This is what I do. Let me, let me send you to what, what I do. Let me tell you about me. Let me tell you what I've, and I think a lot of people, you, you set out to meet someone, but then you don't know what the hell to say. You need to be prepared for the opportunity to answer the question. What do you do? When somebody says to you, what do you do? You can't say, well, a little bit of everything. Or, or, or you can't just say, well, you know, well, you know, we've been, I've been, you know, internet marketing. I'm an internet marketer. Right. Okay, dude. Cool. We Good are. for you. Yeah. We, yeah. That's we why are. we're here. Yeah. It's, you know, uh, you need to, you need to kind of have your own little elevator pitch. You know, uh, when somebody says, well, Omar, what do you do? I run a company called Higher Level Strategies. We're an internet entrepreneur empowerment company. I help internet entrepreneurs gain the power in their business that they need to make the kind of money that they want to make. That's a very vague answer. You know, oh, really? Well, that's interesting. Well, what exactly do you do? Well, I'm glad you asked. Tell me a little bit about, about you. What, what are you doing in your business? What kind of needs do you have in your business? Tell me about it. And that, it kind of leads me into getting them talking about them, you know, and, and making it a conversation. I don't push the string. And I'm going to talk a little bit about pulling versus pushing in a little bit. Uh, but, it, you know, what's, what's important is um, I, I added here on this first bullet point on your screen, how available are you? And what's your call to pitch? You know, a lot of people are worried about a call to action. Well, when you're networking and meeting people, you need a call to pitch. You shouldn't be calling them to action in the first time that you talk to them. You should be calling them to a pitch. You should be making a plan to make a plan. You should say, okay, listen, let's talk later, man. Let's let's exchange numbers right now. And that's another thing is have business posture, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Don't just give somebody your number, ask for an exchange of numbers. If I'm giving you mine, you should rightfully give me yours. You know, mm -hmm. let's exchange business cards. Let me give you your number. And listen, let's set a date and time where we can possibly talk a little more. See what I'm doing? I'm creating a call to the pitch. Mm -hmm. So I am getting you to commit to a date and time where I'm going to be able to pitch you. This is very different than me pitching you right now when we've just met. And you, what you've done there is you've kind of broken the overbearing, overselling, obnoxious kind of car salesman guy where he's trying to close you right now, right now, right now. And you're like, well, I feel violated, dude. Like I just met you five minutes ago and you're getting a little bit too personal. Like you want me to, you want me to hire you or something like that. No, you got to, you got to be prepared for an elevator. You got to have an, ele an elevator pitch, a quick 30 second description of what you do and you should be able to recite it like I just did. Hey, my name is Omar Martin. I run a company called Higher Level Strategies. It's an internet entrepreneur empowerment company and we basically give entrepreneurs the power to take their finances and their business to the next level. And that's that's my 30 second description of what I do. And then I ask, well, what do you do? And how might we be able to help each other? I'm, I'm, I'm just curious. I'd like to get to know you. And, and then you want to set up a call to a pitch. We're going to talk about how to set up a call to a pitch and how to get a commitment uh, in a second here. I want to talk first about pulling the string. I know this is something that actually Melinda taught me. And she used to be very good at this when she was selling. 
uh, at the door. And, uh, you know, a lot of people kind of push the string with prospects. They push the string with employees. No one likes a pushy or annoying, overbearing person, either in their life as an employee or either in their life as a vendor or in their life uh, in general as a prospect or potential uh, business partner. You don't want somebody that's trying to push themselves or impose their feelings and their will on you. So what you want to do is kind of be the person that holds the carrot out in front of the donkey and makes the donkey go to the carrot. So you put some things out there and see if that person bites, kind of like fishing. You know, you, you go and you throw your bait in the water and you attract some fish. And when you get that first bite, do you just kind of just like reel it? If you do that, you're going to lose your bait. What you do is you pull it in a little bit. You reel it in a little bit. That's called pulling the string. You pull the string in a little bit. And what happens is it makes the fish want it even more. It's like, hey, no, you didn't just pull away from me. And then you go and then it goes and it swallows the hook, which is what you want. That's when you go and reel in the deal, right? A lot of people, they're going out there, they're chasing the fish and trying to grab the fish with their hand and stick the hook in its mouth. And that's not the way to network. What you want to do is you want to pull the string with people. Um, you know, we were talking a little bit, and I know we're bouncing a little uh, around a little bit, but we were talking about uh, making that connection and icebreakers, and this is a very good bullet here. No one cares how much you know until they know how much you care, right? So sometimes we make the mistake of making it all about me, me, me. Oh, well, I've done this. Yeah, have you, have you ever read this? Yeah, I wrote an article on that too. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was on that. You see that leaderboard? I was on that leaderboard. I did this and that. Yeah, okay, dude, at the end of the day, who cares? At the end of the day, who cares? What can you do for me? And you've shown me that that you really don't care about me. You haven't told me anything uh, that that would interest me. You're just talking about you, 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 you. How much you care about me? You know, um, the example I made a minute ago, where someone quoted uh, something from page 13 on high performance sales secrets, that shows me like, wow, this guy cared enough about what I do to go. And even if he just Googled me 15 minutes ago, he cared enough to go and learn about me before he approached me. And that kind of made me feel like, oh wow, okay, like this guy's cool, you know? Um, so no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Here's the important part about every time they meet someone. I, I, I don't remember, I didn't make this up. I don't remember who said this or where I heard it first, but the purpose of every meeting is to set another meeting, right? You don't want to walk away from a meeting without having set a next time to talk, a next time to meet. Uh, whether it's a phone conversation that's going to happen, you have to book it. And, you know, what we do is we kind of narrow people. We let people get into a choice. We let people go into a choice of decide what it is they want to, uh, what day they want to meet. Uh, so what we do is we give them options, right? And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how we do that. What we do is we let them choose a date and time for the next contact. By using the figs, a factor of impulse, uh, fear of loss, indifference, greed, and sense of urgency. I'm not going to go too high into the figs right now, but you want to get them to select a date. So what I do is I give them no way out. And I do something like, hey, so listen, Tim, it was really good talking to you right now. I actually have to run. I know you have to run too. We have got a lot of people to talk to, but you're important to me, and I want to get to know you a little bit better. I want to see if we can help each other look. I'm going to look at my calendar right now on my phone. I've got Wednesday at 3 p.m. I've also got Friday at 10 a.m. Which of those two would be better for us to talk, right? And no, I'm not, I don't want to talk to you is not an option. I basically gave them a late afternoon and an early morning. My calendar's completely empty next week, dude. That's why I'm here, but I'm not going to tell you that. I'm going to give you an option. I'm going to say, hey, look, I'd like to talk to you at this time on Wednesday or at this time on Friday. Which one of those would be best for you? And he might turn around and say, ah, oh, you know what, I'm in, uh, next week I'm in so-and-so. And then I say to him, okay, well, listen, give me a good date and time for the following. And if he says, ah, oh, you know what, I, I'm not sure, you know what, then we've kind of missed the ball here. And I need to say, okay, listen, if I see you later, I'll approach you. Maybe something will come up. Here's my card. And that's kind of, that's one that kind of went south. I'm going to have to try that elevator pitch or that contact again later. It didn't work. That's my cue to not be overbearing. Uh, and, and I got to go find someone else. And then, and then we do the SW3 equals N, right? Some will. Some won't. So what? Who cares? Next. Next. That's right. <laughs> some will, some won't. So what? Next. SW3 equals N. And you've got to keep going. You've got to keep going. 
and just find your next contact. Uh, and that was the mentality that we we had with with door to door and with team building uh, and things like that. Some will, some won't. So what next? Who cares? There's always somebody else out there. Uh, be polite, be good, but realize that not everyone is a good fit for your business. Not everyone is a good fit for your business. I'm gonna say that a third time. Not everyone is a good fit for your business. And that brings us to uh, the next one. Well. There, the, the next two bullet points that I have on the screen, you got to have business posture, right? Don't be needy. So when that does happen, you don't say, oh, well, 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 you know, okay, listen, listen, then let's make it happen. How about, how about 11 o'clock? How about 11 o'clock on Friday then since you can't make that? No, 11 is bad too. Okay, Saturday, so I'll, I'll get up on Saturday if you want. You want I'll go, can I come to your house? You want me to come to your house? You know, okay, so what you've done here is you've lost all business posture at this point and you're appealing, your, your, your sense of need is what's, what's shining through now. Uh, I'm going to be honest, people are not attracted to someone that's needy, someone that's pulling them. You know, it's, 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 that it's got to be a mutually beneficial exchange. Um, remember, that person is usually there to network too. Uh, so don't be afraid to approach people, but realize that you can't be all over people and, and, and appear to be needy. Remember in high school when you had a, a boy or a girl, you know, chasing you around and they had a crush on you and they just wouldn't leave you alone. They wouldn't leave you alone. They wouldn't leave you alone. Was that the person that you wanted to be? You're like, oh, God, Jesus, they're stalking me, leaving me. But then all of a sudden, when they stopped giving you the time of day and they went and they found somebody else, all of a sudden you're like, oh, well, what happened? What, what happened there? Now, that yeah, now you're like, oh, well, let me go talk to him again, right? Okay, perfect example of what happens when you're all over somebody. They don't want it. You're pushing yourself on it. But when you take it away, you're holding the carrot. You know, uh, not every match is made in heaven. Okay, don't force an attraction. That, uh, you know, maintaining forced attraction is just too much work. Uh, if you force something to happen, if you force a connection to happen, uh, you're you're gonna end up unhappy because it was forced to begin with. If you convince somebody to do business with you, you're gonna have to convince them to stay in business with you every single day moving forward. That's not a fun thing. It's too much work. Those kind of relationships are just draining. They're exhausting. If it's a if it's meant to be, then it's meant to be. So you, you give them your elevator pitch. Talk to them about. Uh, I'll talk to them about them. Uh, try to book that 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 call to a pitch, you know, and uh, give them a choice. Say, hey, would you like to talk on this day or on this time? Or maybe, hey, maybe while you're at the event, hey, listen, uh, later this afternoon, I've got to meet with somebody at three. Uh, later this afternoon, about four thirty, five o'clock, uh, I can meet up with you. If not, I can set something up. Maybe we can do a phone call tomorrow. Which of those two is better for you? If that guy says, hey, yeah, four o'clock, let's meet. That guy's interested, right? Because you put it out there and that guy ever says, ah, hey, how about maybe we talk tomorrow? Hey, no problem, dude. Let's exchange numbers right now. If that guy says, ah, just, I don't have a card with me. Just give me your card. You know, now you've gotten two signs already. This is, okay, no problem, man. Listen, maybe we'll talk later on. And that's where you kind of use your indifference, right? That's the I in figs, indifference, fear of loss, indifference, greed, and sense of urgency. Remember, not every match is made in, in heaven. And Lonnie alluded to this earlier. It's the last one that I wanted to talk about in this presentation. Humor and laughter. It's the ultimate connector. Be funny, man. You've you got to be funny. When you can get someone smiling, when you can get someone laughing about something, they, uh, their guard is down now. They don't see you as, uh, uh, you know, dangerous or possibly offensive, or they're not afraid of you anymore because you made them laugh. You're a funny guy. Funny people don't tend to be dangerous. You know, when somebody comes to rob you, they're not usually cracking jokes. They don't usually, right. they're not usually dressed as a comedian. They're like, like right. hey, freeze. You know, he's not, he's like, he, he doesn't come up to you and go, hey, knock, knock. You know what I mean? It, it's, you gotta, you gotta keep in mind that humor and laughter is the ultimate connector and it's a good way to break the ice. Talk to them about something that uh, that they like, that they want to talk. Get them talking. Get them talking about them. You know. Um, so that's what I got. Do you guys have anything you want to add, Lon? Well, you know what? Proper networking is dating. Dating. And, and you know, you think about this when you when you're trying to date someone. Right. right. I haven't thought about that in well, I know, 15 but let's, years. Let's, let's, let's talk about it. Let's I got look, everything I need right here, baby. Let's, let's look at that. <laughs> You're better. Exactly. <laughs> but let's look at the dating scene, though. You know, you go out there and you try to position yourself to be attractive to that person. You don't want to push that person away. You're trying to create a relationship. So it is dating. This is the same thing. It's the same principle. You know? You're, you're actually dating your, this may sound insane, but you're actually dating your customers. 
your dating your JV partners. Mm -hmm. well, you, I used to you date dating my boss. your affiliates. You, you date Omar, <laughs> Omar's dated his boss. <laughs> I married her. Yeah. And married her, right? Uh, but no, I, I know what you're saying. It's it's courting period. It's it's, it's yeah. a courting period, and right. you have to. Uh, you don't want to be all over them because there's a big difference between courting and stalking, yeah. and uh, you don't want to be Power that stalker. Yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, now here are some suggestions of places to network and things that you should do in the quest for your networking attending live events we just spoke about that earlier what a great way to start conversations with people walking up to them reading their name tag and say hey tim nice to meet you man my name is omar what do you do uh where are you from and get them talking about them commenting on social posts and blogs lonnie robinson and i met in this fashion i met lonnie through facebook uh, and Melinda's pointing, saying, "What now?" He knew me first. I right. just want to show him. Melinda's first. famous. Okay, <laughs> so uh, so it was Lonnie's <laughs> tactic to get to me through Melinda. I would suppose. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, you, you comment on people's posts, uh, talk about them, get them talking on their fa on their page, uh, on their blog, get to know them, and uh, strike up a conversation. Subscribe to someone's mailing list. What a great way to get to know that person, know what with what they're talking about, what they're promoting right now, and have something to approach them about when you do comment on their social posts and blogs. Be present without being a stalker, like I just said, uh, and, and strike up that conversation, strike up that courtship. Uh, people love to talk about them. I wish you lots of luck in breaking the ice and doing proper networking. Attend live events. They will improve your business. I look forward to seeing you on the next My Unfair Advantage video. Take care.